Welcome to this service of Holy Communion for this Sunday, the 13th of September. That is the 14th Sunday after Trinity. And a warm welcome from St. George's Church and Claims Church in Worcester. A special mention to all those who are following us on Facebook or who are joining us later on YouTube. We hope that you will feel uplifted and spiritually fed this morning. The Lord be with you. This morning, Reverend Paula will be preaching to us and she will be reflecting on how the act of forgiveness builds up community and how we can play our part in that. Today's service is a service of Holy Communion. We believe that through the power of the Holy Spirit, nothing is impossible. So we invite you to have something nearby to eat and to drink so that you too can share in this holy meal. It can be a biscuit and a glass of Ribena. It doesn't need to be bread and wine. We're going to begin with some more beautiful singing and playing from Alison. Jesus calls us here to meet him. Jesus calls us here to meet him, pass through wood and song and prayer. We affirm God's promised presence where his people live and care. Praise the God who keeps his promise. Praise the Son who calls us friends. Praise the Spirit who among us to our hopes and fears attends. Jesus calls us to confess him, word of life and Lord of old. Share our own of flesh and frailness, serving all who fail or fall. Tell his holy human story, tell his tales that all may hear. Tell the world that Christ in glory came to earth to meet us here. Jesus calls us to each other, found in him are no divides. Grace and class and text and language, such a barriers he derides. Join the hand of friend and stranger, join the hands of age and youth. Join the faithful and the doubter in their common search for truth. Jesus calls us to his table, rooted firm in time and space, where the church in earth and heaven finds a common meeting place. Share the bread and wine, his body, share the love of which we sing. Share the feast for saints and sinners, hosted by our Lord and King. Thank you, Alice. That's such a beautiful hymn. Well, we're going to begin our opening responses now. And um, please do join in with the words in bold at home. Let's just pause before we begin. The word of the eternal Father created us. The love of the gracious Son redeems us. The presence of the Holy Spirit empowers us. Let us worship the glorious Trinity, God, power, love, and peace. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, your dance 
should send us spinning into the world to live out and declare your love. But we confess that our vision is blurred by fear and self-interest. You give us clear commandments about love, justice and righteousness. But we, we pretend, pretend not to understand. Them. You promise to be with us always. But we know your presence and follow our own way. Forgive us, give us fresh vision. And restore us to your way, we pray. Let's just take a moment now as we bring before God anything on our hearts of which we're ashamed or which we regret this week. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And the Colette's prayer for this, the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Merciful God, your son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to have our... Uh, I'm going to introduce our activity. Um, we started these services introducing an activity for the children, but quickly realised that actually a lot of the adults quite like to engage in this um, act of reflection. Um, so this week's activity might look rather similar to last week's, in that we're going to start by, uh, you just need a piece of paper, and we're going to draw a heart on the paper, the idea is that you folded it in half and that you draw the heart around the, the fold there. Um, and then you cut it out. Now, if you've got a piece of red paper, that's brilliant. If you haven't, you can just use a piece of white paper and then you can just color it in. So there's a piece of white paper. It's the back of a, a letter from the bank. Very good thing to do with that. And um, if you've got patience throughout the service, please just get a red pen or whatever colour you fancy and colour it in. And then if you've got a laminator, you can laminate it. I've got a bit of a thing about laminating, so I've done that. But I've also um, I've laminated this one with sellotape. If you just cut pieces of ordinary sellotape off and just go along line after line after line, front and back, it just makes it a little bit waterproof. Or what we're going to do later. So um, if you'd like to make your crosses, uh, make your hearts even, uh, we'll come back to those later. So that's something to um, just to do thoughtfully as you're listening to Sir, um, Paula's sermon. And now we're going to go to our first reading and we have Paul Fulbrook if you'd like to read our first reading. Do not judge one another. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarrelling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honour of the Lord. Also those who eat, Eat in honour of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honour of the Lord and give thanks to God. 
We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Paul. Now we're going to sing again. Beautiful song. I know that lots of you love this song and I know it's a big favourite. Make me a channel of your peace. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred, let me bring your love Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord And where there's the true faith in you Make me a channel of your peace where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, Master, grant that I may never see so much to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It's in giving of ourselves that we receive. And in dying that we're born to eternal life. Thank you, Alison. And now, hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Over to uh, Lynn or Clive from Cranfer. The gospel is from Matthew 18, verses 21 to 35, the parable of the unmerciful servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man owed him 10,000 bags of gold and was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sought to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay you back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. 
Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants heard what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant said, I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers until he could pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister with your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you to our readers. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, take these words and use them to speak to each one of us according to our needs. Amen. Well, both our readings this morning are a bit of a, um, a beginner's guide to a thriving church community, I suppose, um, and a, a community that knows something of that deep peace that Alison sung so beautifully to us uh, as we started our service. I wonder if I was to ask you to describe our church community, what words would spring to mind immediately? Probably words like loving and caring, um, prayerful, worshipping, missional, servant-hearted, all really good words. Uh, for marks, though, if one of the first things you said was patience, tolerant and forgiving. I wonder how many of us would have put forgiveness at the top of the list. I suppose some of you would argue that that comes under loving and caring, but it's so important to the integrity of the church that forgiveness should be instantly recognised as a valued characteristic. After all, isn't our whole faith based on accepting that we are forgiven, forgiven a lot, and that through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can receive that forgiveness over and over again. So forgiveness isn't a one-off occurrence, uh, but limitless, as Peter found out when he asked that question to Jesus, how many times should I forgive another member of the church? Seven? I suppose he thought he was being quite generous there. I have to think about that situation because you wonder if perhaps there was one particular person that was really getting on Peter's nerves by constantly doing something really annoying and upsetting. And each time Peter's getting more and more irritated. How long should he ignore and forgive that person before he could tell them to just sling their hook? Or maybe it was something more serious than just an annoying habit. Perhaps it was something Peter considered to be a sin that needed dealing with once and for all. Surely a cut-off point is needed when sin begins to affect the community. And Peter wanted Jesus to give a specific answer, but instead, as usual, Jesus closed his answer in a parable. A king forgives his slave a huge amount of money. 10,000 talents, I've told, I've done a bit of research, but I'm told it's about 3,000 years worth of work at minimum wage. There's, there's no debt too large to be forgiven, it seems, for that master. And that's what the kingdom of heaven is like. That's how our God is like. But later, that slave refused to give his fellow slave 100 denarii. That's about three months' work. And this had a devastating effect, not only on that poor slave, but on his wife and family too. So consequently, refusing to forgive, the forgiven slave lost his own forgiveness. So Jesus' answer to Peter's question is that forgiveness is not measurable. It's a way of being, of living, of loving, of relating, of thinking and seeing. It's the way of Christ. And if we're to follow Christ, then we must become 
that must become our way as well. Forgiveness of sins is quite simply what our faith is all about, isn't it? We ask this in the Lord's Prayer, which we say most, if not every day. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We can't expect the first part of that request to happen if we aren't prepared to live out the second part. It's a reflective, a, re, a re, repetitive cycle of being forgiven and being willing to forgive. Of course, it's not always easy to forgive, is it? In fact, there are some circumstances where it's very hard and almost impossible. And thinking of domestic abuse, emotional abuse, and all those sort of things which really require the help of professionals. But the church could and should be helping victims of such abuse to have the strength, to find the strength, to trust, to forgive, and find peace and healing in reconciliation. I want to tell you a couple of stories. If you are mindful of the fact that two days ago was the anniversary of 9-11, the Twin Towers attack, and it's still so very raw in a lot of people's memories. And yet I came across a wonderful story of a man called, I hope I can get his name right, Rais Buya. He's a Bangladeshi who survived a hate crime fueled by anti-Muslim sentiment after 9-11. And his survival led him to set up a non-profit organization called World Without Hate, dedicated to the act of compassion and forgiveness. And in an interview, he says, revenge never brings peace or solution. It only brings more disaster and misery. It doesn't make your own pain go away. But forgiveness can help to change the person and bring peace and healing to you both and to those around you. Isn't that amazing? Whole communities able to feel the ripples of grace. And here's another story. More recently, the fiancé of Floyd George urged protesters to find forgiveness in their hearts, saying she knows that the community is hurting and she hopes that they will respond in a way that honours Floyd. And that way is not the use of violence or revenge. So today we sort of stand in an uncomfortable sort of place. We hold a tension between another anniversary of 9-11 and today's gospel reading. The memories and the images, the anger, the pain, the losses, they collide with Jesus' teaching on forgiveness. Both are very real and both are true. But the deeper truth though, is that we would still be experiencing that tension, even if September the 11th didn't, uh, September 11th had never happened. Look back in recent history and we see the Holocaust, the killing fields of Cambodia, the genocides in Bosnia and Rwanda, racial discrimination, wars and torture in Afghanistan and Iraq. And in our own lives, we might find broken promises, harsh words, physical or emotional wounds. I'm sure every one of us could tell stories of when we've been hurt by another. But beneath the pain and the memories, lie that question of forgiveness. C.S. Lewis writes, everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until there's something to forgive. So what do we do then when there is something to forgive? Because sometimes just saying forgive and forget puts us in danger of making a very trite comment that can demean the one who is suffering and just picks away at their wounds. Forgiving someone takes time and effort and often needs the help of others. It takes courage. It takes um, a sort of a willingness to listen to the other and to understand where they're coming from. And sometimes it can be very uncomfortable. And to use a bit of science now, sometimes it can be very uncomfortable to forgive. But it begins first and foremost with the recognition and thanksgiving that we have all been forgiven. And secondly, 
Forgiveness doesn't originate with us. It begins with God. We do not choose to forgive. We only choose to share the forgiveness that we've been received. And thirdly, forgiveness is communal. There will be times when we feel we just can't do it and the weight of pain is too much and it's fizzing away at us and making us uncomfortable. Deep hurt though, left unforgiven, can unsettle the whole community. And when that happens, it should fall to others to help bring about reconciliation. So forgiveness then doesn't mean that we forget necessarily or condone or approve of what was done. It doesn't mean we ignore or excuse cruelty or injustice, but it does mean that forgiveness will release us from the, the thing that binds us to them. We look to the future rather than to the past. Something changes in us when we try and see and love as God does. Our lives then are enriched from this to this. Real depth and peace. Forgiveness is a way in which we bring our communal line, our church community, in line with the grace and love of a father who values each one of us so much that he forgives us again and again and again, all our annoying habits and traits, as well as our more serious wrongdoings. His forgiveness is endless. Praise God, praise God for that. And on this Education Sunday, forgiveness is something we should be modeling and teaching to our children as well as to one another. May we learn together to imitate God's patience and forgive, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Amen. Thanks, Rev Paula. Thank you for that. If you have made a heart, now would be <coughs> a good time, <coughs> excuse me, to grab a pen and just write on some of the things you know you need forgiveness for. Um, i just give you a tip. Don't try to use permanent marker because it is actually quite difficult to get off after. So if you just want to write on your heart, I'm not going to ask you to share these today, but we will wash them clean later on. So do uh, write on your heart those annoying traits that you, uh, let's be honest with yourself. No one else needs to see it. What do you need forgiveness for? And now we're going to say together the words of the creed. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, Amen. from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with yeah. his love. Yeah. We, we believe in God, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit who strengthens, strengthens us with power from on high. We, we believe in one God, God Father, Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Pat and Andrew. And now over to James Sylvie for our prayers today. In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul exhorts us to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God also in Christ forgave you. And in Matthew's Gospel, we have heard how Jesus told his disciples to forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Forgiving is a part of what it means to love. So in the sure knowledge of God's love and forgiveness for each one of us, let us pray. The response to the Lord is full of compassion, is his love endures forever. Thank you, Father, for the gift of your love, 
which forgives again and again and keeps on trusting us with the care of your people, even though we so often fall short. May the love of Christ shine through each one of us and help us to minister to one another's needs with compassion and sensitivity. The Lord is full of compassion. His, His love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Thank you, Father, for the beauty of your creation. Forgive us for the terrible damage we are doing to it. May all nations and peoples work urgently together to repair the harm being done and reinstate your natural order. May we learn to use the gifts you have so abundantly given us to nurture and protect the incredible diversity of life on earth for the good of all, including those as yet unborn. The Lord is full of compassion. His, His love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Thank you, Father, for what we have been forgiven and for the opportunities we have each day to learn the joy of forgiving others. Save us from self-righteousness and keep us learning in humility at your feet. The Lord is full of compassion. His, His love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Thank you, Father, for all those who care for the sick, the unstable, the ungrateful and the difficult. We pray for all who, on, who are on the receiving end of hate, deceit, suspicion or abuse. And for those who cause others pain and distress of any kind. We pray for your healing, transforming and forgiveness. The Lord is full of compassion. His, His love, love endures, endures forever. Thank you, Father, for those whose living and dying has taught us so much about love. Freed from their pain and restrictions of age or injury, may they rejoice with you in heaven forevermore. The Lord is full of compassion. His, His love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Thank you, Father, for showing us through your Son that forgiveness is a vital part of love. Help us always to walk in your way with tender, loving and forgiving hearts. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Jane and Michael. We're going to share the peace with one another now, and um, you may do this however you wish. You don't need to stand up. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so let's share a sign of God's peace with one another. You may uh, do the BSL, peace be with you, or peace be with you, or just wave and smile and share God's love. Because as Paula says, at the heart of everything is love. And just to add to the little activity, if you want now um, to get some water and wash, wash off those things that you've written. This is why it was important to waterproof it. You will see that they are washed away. And as we come at, uh, to the table now to receive bread and wine, let's give thanks that we are forgiven. And so we're going to sing, take this moment, really beautiful hymn, um, really um, deeply meaningful words. Thank you, Alison. Take this moment, sign and space. Take my friends around here.
tiredness of my days. Take my past regrets, letting your forgiveness touch all I can't forget. Take the little child in me, scared of Thank you, Alison. So now we come to our Eucharistic prayer. So do you have uh, in front of you the um, item of food and uh, something to drink that you want to be blessed this morning? If you haven't got them, do feel free to just nip off and get them now. The Lord is here. His spirit, His spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to, to give, give thanks and praise. Holy God, loving Father and Mother Eternal, creator of all time and space, in this <clears throat> our own time and place, we give you thanks and praise for giving us life and inviting us to share in the history of the people who are blessed by your faithfulness, challenged by your prophets, forgiven by your mercy, and ever surprised by your power to do more, working in us than we can ask or imagine. <clears throat> Therefore, we join our voices with voices of all you have created, all you have loved and all you sustain, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you for your life manifest in our brother Jesus, bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, whose life, death and resurrection reveal you fully, your love for humanity, your desire for human freedom, your passion for justice. We remember that Jesus gathered at table with his friends in a time of struggle and fear and took bread, blessed it, and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body. And after supper, Jesus looked forward to your desired day of joy and power and took the cup of wine and blessed it and said, take this all of you and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. I will share this meal with you again in the reign of God Share this bread and this cup in memory of me. Let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. You may like to hold up your bread and your wine or your biscuit and your squash or whatever it is you've got. Hold them up now so that we can see them on the screen. Come now, Holy Spirit of God, as you were present at creation, be present now. Let these gifts of bread and wine become for us the bread of life and the cup of blessing 
as you were sent by Jesus to accompany us on our journey of faith, be present now in our hearts and in our homes and make this community in receiving this bread and cup one body in Christ. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name, your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth, earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, us Give us today our daily bread and, and forgive us our, our sins, sins as, as we forgive those who sin against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. evil. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power and the glory, the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. And now if you want to um, partake of your bread and your wine or whatever it is you have, we'll just have a moment of quiet as people do that. Let us pray. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stay together. The prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your, to your praise, praise and, and glory. glory. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for uh, your input today. Thank you, Pat and Andrew, for being uh, <laughs> what we sort of call our first responders there. That was great. Well done. We're going to just share some news and notices now. Um, so I'm not going to ask you to share your hearts that you've made, but if there is anyone that wants to share them, um, I wouldn't um, put you off. So do unmute yourself and call out now. Just call out your name and say, yes, me, if you want to do that. Um, and whilst we wait for those people to do that, have we got anything, any news or notices that anyone wants to share? Do unmute yourself if you want to share something now. Just having a little look through at everybody. No one looks to that they're itching to share anything. Joe, I've got Pat, Phil and Small all unmuted. So hopefully all wanting to share. Oh, thank you. So um, Bernard, can you, um, oh no, Bernard, he has muted himself again. Um, that's that's Bernard Small. Um, uh, 
And now I've managed to get myself stuck. Um, who else is unmuted? I'm unmuted. Pat, I've had a lovely oh. week in Devon. Oh, that's good. Did Isn't you get it? some nice weather? We had some lovely weather and we went with our son and his wife, their little boy and Alex's parents as well. And if it was next week, we would have been illegal because we would have been seven of us. So we oh. were cancelled. So we were so lucky. Wow, that is such, such a good news. Good news story. And it heart breaks, doesn't it, for people that have got parties larger than larger than six um it is it is so difficult but also so important um anyone else want to share anything stelios um would you do you want to tell us how it went at university because we're all uh, we're all keen to hear how you got on because you've had your first week this week haven't you i don't know if you can hear me yes we can hear you that's great Hello, everybody. Uh, you can see a new background. I'm in my new room now, and I'm in Birmingham. Uh, and uh, yeah, we started this week. Um, tomorrow we start official as they gave us already uh, our timetable. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit stressful for me because uh, uh, they don't allow us as well uh, to go to parties. They don't, they, at my university, they don't allow us to, go to do parties, to do uh, anything like that. Right, uh, right, Sue, you're there to learn not to party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but at weekends, we need something to do, you know? <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's, they are very tough on us. Uh, well, uh, I, don't, I don't judge them. Uh, they know what they do, so yeah, you know. Well, that's it's good to hear that you're doing well. And um, lovely to see see you here. And um, considering your first week at uni, and um, lovely to see Vivian as well. Vivian um, doesn't say anything, but Vivian and her daughter Vivian, I believe, know Pat Price, and they <coughs> came to St George's service last week, which was really lovely. Now I know your name, Vivian. I can say hello. <laughs> so um, lovely to see you too. <coughs> Jane so, Sylvie's uh, unmuted as well. Oh, Jane Sylvie. Would you like to say yeah. something, Jane or Michael? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave, a, put a big secret out. Uh, Jane has a very special birthday coming up on Thursday. Um, it's got a note after it, and I think I'm allowed to say 70, aren't I? Yes. Um, and we've been caught the other way around because we have a big family party uh, organised for next weekend, and we just had to, had to cut it down to six people. So uh, uh, that's a slight sadness, but uh, we'll, we'll try and cheer her up and do our best uh, uh, from Thursday onwards. I'm so sorry about that, because I hope that you still have a really lovely birthday. I think we, we should sing to you. I lost you. You've muted. You've muted yourself, Joe. Okay. No, it's, that's fine. Um, so we're going to finish our service now. Um, with our final song. Don't forget that there is a 4.30 service this afternoon at Plains. Um, I'm pretty sure there are a few seats left, so do call Rachel or Phil if you want to attend. And Janky is leading that with the choir, so I know we're all in for a treat. And now we're going to sing our final song, Praise is Rising. Well, if you've got something to shake or rattle, or arms to wave around, go for it. Praises rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, they're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us. Worthy of all the praises, Hosanna, Hosanna, 
Hosanna, come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. And uh, thank you, Carrie and Amanda, for that comment that um, they said they've never thought of Jesus as their brother before. And uh, I think that is a really, does definitely uh, change that relationship, doesn't it? To think of Jesus as our brother. And um, so maybe that's something to hold on to. And do this week, bear in mind what Paula has said. and Let's all try and be more forgiving. Um, and as a church or as a two churches, let's be more forgiving uh, of each other and of our, if you like, our situation that we're in within the diocese. But now, the blessing. You are called by God the Father, kept safe by Jesus his Son, filled with the power of his Holy Spirit. May peace and love and forgiveness be yours in abundance, and may your homes and your families be forever held in his love. In the name of Jesus, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now, our final words. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. So we just have a short pause here as we allow Facebook to catch up with us before we cut them off. And um, I don't know how many seconds